Yes, uh, I did uh, uh, the uh, post-mortem examination of uh, an individual uh, uh, who was uh, been undergoing treatment for COVID-19 infection and he was been treated for 13 days and he died uh, subsequently uh, during the course of treatment of uh, COVID-19. And he was around 62 year old uh, male and with uh, comorbid conditions of diabetes and hypertension. So he was a non-alcoholic and a non-smoker and he was not obese and uh, but uh, just few days, a few hours, sorry, few hours before his death, he did develop some respiratory distress, and his oxygen saturation went uh, drastically down, and uh, he died as a result of it. Uh, he was admitted with uh, symptoms of fever and cough, uh, and he had also complained of chills, and but he was treated accordingly uh, as per the COVID-19 protocol, and. Uh, and over a few days he was being normal, but just a few hours before his death he developed a severe respiratory distress and he died. And I was fortunate to get uh, the consent from the families to do this particular post-mortem examination. And uh, my post uh, 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 method of examination was into two parts. One is to understand the existence of virus in this uh, dead body. The first part of my examinations of this COVID-19 body was uh, it was uh, to understand the existence by taking the swabs of, uh, from the nose. That was one swab was taken from the nose. And the second swab was taken from both in the mouth and the throat. And the third was taken from the uh, surface of the lung. And the fourth swab was taken from the trachea and the bronchi. And the fifth swab was taken from the skin surface of the face and the neck. And the uh, swabs were subjected for the RT-PCR technique uh, examination to understand the existence of the virus and the shocking results were the virus did exist uh, in the nose and the throat and the mouth swabs and uh, we need to inform that uh, these swabs were taken 18 hours after the death of the disease of the individuals and uh, the swabs which were taken from the surface of the lung and the uh, trachea and the uh, bronchi uh, showed uh, no signs of virus Similarly, the swabs taken from the surface of the skin of the face and the neck also showed uh, no existence of uh, virus. So this clearly indicates that the virus were not present on in the internal organs at the same time not present on the skin surface. But we can't conclude by just one examination. I think uh, more such research is very much important for us to understand or come into a conclusion. The second part of the examination was uh, to study the uh, disease process uh, involving the organs, uh, both gross and the microscopic examination. In the gross examination, what is all the major findings which was uh, 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 involving the lungs? And the lungs were, uh, uh, the combined weight of both the lungs was 2180 grams. And to my surprising, as I've seen a lot of uh, diffused alveolar damaged lungs are so-called ERDS lungs or the shock lungs. There were actually, there were increase in size and uh, increase in weight, but uh, they were firm in consistency. Whereas uh, this particular lung, which I saw was not, was not much changes in the size, but it was definitely, there were a lot of changes in its uh, consistency. It was not firm, it was very hard. I, I was not able to feel the uh, difference between the uh, liver and the lungs. And also grossly I was seeing some uh, grayish uh, areas. At the same time, uh, the infarct signs were present both externally and multiple petechial hemorrhages were present. And what I noticed was the margins of the lungs were sharp and uh, there were marginal hemorrhages were present. So these were the major findings which I saw in the gross appearance of the lungs and on cut suction we were able to see the infarct signs and uh, microscopically there was a major changes which I saw was an uh, uh, enlarged, uh, 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 diffusely enlarged interstitium with a lot of uh, inflammatory cells, the uh, acute and the chronic inflammatory cells. And beside this, uh, the alveolar damage, there is a diffuse damage of the alveolar ruptures. And more importantly, what I saw was multiple pulmonary uh, thromboemboli leading to coagulative necrosis. So this particular outcome of this particular finding, it clearly indicates that the mere uh, administration of oxygen or the mere connection 
uh, of this uh, patient with a ventilator uh, solves no purpose because the underlying pathology involved the thromboemboli wherein the thrombolytic therapy or anticoagulant therapy is very important apart from the oxygen and the antiviral or the antibiotic therapy. And even the uh, other findings which we saw was the respiratory passages, the trachea, bronchi, there was no mucosal flux, but there were isolated hemorrhages involving the mucosal of the trachea and the bronchi. But the trachea is showed mild uh, extensive inflammation and with uh, uh, isolated area of ulcerations. The heart was flabby and it was, uh, uh, there were no external hemorrhages as such, but internally we did see in the microscopically there were hemorrhages and there were uh, 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 inflammatory cells, uh, largely consisting of lymphocytes. When the, the liver, we saw, I saw the enlargement of the sinusoids with uh, uh, multiple hemorrhages uh, and also uh, a lot of inflammatory cells. Similarly, the spleen was firm and that was shrunken and there were inflammatory cells and isolated hemorrhage. Whereas the kidneys, uh, we show that the, most of the uh, cells lining uh, uh, showed uh, some atrophy and the glomeruli also showed some sort of uh, shrinking and isolated hemorrhages were present. And besides this, the tubular uh, necrotic changes were present at places. And in the brain, which we saw was uh, 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 moderately edematous brain and uh, isolated hemorrhages at places we saw the um, hemorrhages but uh, I was not able to find any thromboemboli in the brain but overall uh, uh, the most uh, specific findings which I can conclude based on my autopsy findings in this particular uh, uh, dissection of COVID-19 dead body is uh, that uh, the lung findings definitely uh, it's a uh, uh, gross uh, Contrast between the other infective lungs or any shock lungs or ERDS lung we have seen earlier uh, than to this particular COVID-19 lung. So I'm sure that this particular findings uh, uh, we have seen uh, is definitely in contrast with those findings uh, elsewhere because many of those uh, lungs uh, have been uh, uh, the studies conducted in few countries like Italy and America or even Thailand for that purpose. What we have seen is uh, there are some ILN changes, but I haven't seen uh, ILN changes in this particular uh, uh, lung. So uh, I am sure that uh, these uh, findings in, in India in this particular patient has opened uh, a lot of uh, anxiety and curiosity to understand uh, that uh, the internal changes as a result of COVID-19 uh, COVID and I feel that more such uh, research or uh, clinical autopsies are very vital for us to understand the disease process and this is very vital uh, to evolve a clinical uh, line of management uh, based on this particular disease, understanding the disease process. I'm sure the government will uh, te definitely uh, take note of this and uh, will encourage research in this regard. Thank you.